Okay, straight off the bat, if you clicked on this video thinking it was going to have something to do with underwear, or at least the lack of it, you're probably going to be disappointed. You know, depending on demand, maybe that's one for a, for a future video, I guess. Anyway, no, this video is about charging from home using a 32 amp commando socket. Now, a few weeks ago, I did a video on charging from home using your three pin plug connector. But this week, we're going to need to swap this for this. Now, this is available from Tesla for around £40. Um, it slots into your standard UMC connection in exactly the same way. And then it plugs in, obviously, this end to your wall in a 32 amp commando socket, which you'll need to have installed. So keep your pants on and let's go commando. Okay, so this is the unit that we've got fixed next to the back door. You've got the switch at the top, and then beneath that, you've got a cap, which underneath has the socket itself. Now the switch at the top, you cannot actually put to the on position without having anything plugged in for safety measures. And the cap below just unscrews and then pulls upwards to show the socket. And then when not in use, it can be screwed back to the lock position. Okay, so actual use, you plug in the adapter and then at that point you can flick on the switch and then you get on the UMC the same thing that you would get if it's a, a three pin plug. So the Tesla letters at this point light up a solid green. Then it's just a case of plugging it in like usual. And you get the normal blue Tesla T that turns green once it's started charging. So let's take a look at how this screen compares to the three pin one we saw a few weeks ago. First of all, you can now see that it's showing as an eight kilowatt input. Now before that was flickering between two and three. And the other thing that's changed is that rather than 10 amp as the charge current that we were getting from the three pin connector, we're now getting a full 32 amp. Now I'm just gonna change this display to show miles, just so that we've got a more real world comparison. So here now you can see that we're at a charge speed of around 28 to 29 miles an hour. Now if you remember from the three pin plug, we were getting around eight to nine miles per hour. So that's over three times the speed. Okay, so let's do the same as we did with the three pin plug and have a look at some practical calculations. Now, one thing that is important to note here is that I'm not taking into consideration here things like the battery being cold or charging the last 80 to 100% of the battery where it's gonna be quite a lot slower than it is for the, for the main part. Really, this is to illustrate what the average charging times is up to 80%. Um, and to give you an idea of what the difference is between this method and the three pin plug. So we firstly looked at how many miles you would get for a full overnight charge, which would be around 12 to 14 hours. Now eight miles per hour, we saw that was 96 to 112 miles. At 28 miles an hour, I mean, really the least you're gonna get is 336 miles. So, I mean, realistically 12 hours is the maximum you're ever gonna need to charge for a full recharge using this method. Secondly, we looked at five to six hours of charge. So this was perhaps you get home at, you know, six, seven in the evening and you put it on until you go to bed. Now at eight miles an hour, we saw that was 40 to 48 miles that you can put back in the tank. However, at 28 miles an hour, you get 140 to 168 miles. Now that is a lot. It's more than you were getting for 12 to 14 hours from the, from the three pin. So even just on an evening's charge, that's probably gonna be enough to refill as much as you want to. Finally, before we looked at 24 hours of charge at eight miles per hour, so if you wanted to do a full day when you weren't driving at all, and we saw that this would 
recharge around 192 miles. Now, obviously, there's no point in looking at 24 hours of charge at 28 miles an hour because it would be well over 100%. So what I've done here is just looked at what the time would be to get the same 192 miles. And at 28 miles an hour, that works out at around seven hours. So you can see there, I mean, we'd already said that it's over three times the speed. And these maths just illustrate that in a, in a more real world sense. So is using a commando socket a viable long-term solution as opposed to getting a dedicated charger? Well, for one, it's certainly cheaper. Um, this whole thing cost about £300, including getting that additional connection from Tesla. Um, and if you compare that to the cost of getting a dedicated charger, that starts at about £650. And that's with the government grant of £350 that's available at the moment. Now, not everyone even qualifies for that, so that can get quite expensive. And this option does at least give you the same speed as a dedicated charger would. However, there are a number of cons to this. Firstly, the general inconvenience. Obviously, it's not tethered. You have to take out your cable every time you use it. So in addition to the inconvenience, you've also got the wear and tear on the cable itself. Secondly, it's not a smart charger, so you can't configure settings or see what's happening from an app like you can with a lot of the dedicated chargers. Now, for me, that's not a massive thing. You can set timings and things in the car for when you want the charger to actually work. So if you want to time it to come on overnight, you can still do that in the car. Um, but obviously it doesn't have the full smarts of a smart charger. Thirdly, it doesn't look great compared to some of the chargers you can get. Um, it's just a box on the wall and it's not even as small as some of the chargers. So things like the EO Pro are much smaller and look a lot better. So really you just have to weigh it up to see whether or not that's worth it for you, whether or not you're willing to make those compromises. So for me, I don't think I'd want to use this on a completely permanent basis. Um, I don't live here normally, so it's nice to have a faster alternative to a three pin plug when I do visit. But when all my house stuff goes through, I think I'll still stick to a tethered, dedicated EV charger. Anyway, I hope you found that helpful. I think this is a good potential alternative for a lot of people and something that isn't really well documented. If you did, please hit the like button below. And if you'd like to see more of the same sort of thing, then please also subscribe. If you've got any comments, questions or suggestions, please also put them below. I'll get back to all of them. But other than that, I'll catch you later.